According to all of these research reports, mastering AI skills can increase your productivity from 14% to 60% greater, increase your quality of life and make you happier because you can focus on the things that you like doing the most. This is wonderful news. But what AI skills should we be learning in order to achieve these results? These reports usually don't get into that part, but it's a legitimate question because you can't possibly learn everything. It feels like there's a new AI breakthrough or a new AI product happening every single week, if not every single day. In this video, we're going to see past all the hype and focus on the core fundamental AI skills, the AI skills that are most worth learning, the highest ROI skills in the age of AI. Thank you HubSpot for sponsoring a portion of this video. The best way to determine what are the actually important skills is by looking at the growing industry trends because in-demand skills follow the trends. So the faster growing the trend, the more in-demand and relevant the skill is. I have spent hundreds of hours reading AI reports on statistics and trends and also testing out different AI technologies. Now diving a little bit deeper into exactly which parts are growing the most and are most relevant. The first one is productivity. There are so many AI productivity tools that are coming out. And according to this report by Forbes, 64% of businesses expect AI to increase their productivity, with up to 50% of people saying that their productivity is already increased. The most common use cases involve responding to email, communication, messages, followed by answering financial questions. I'd like to withdraw my life savings, please and by planning travel, travel itineraries. The second large area of focus is in misinformation and privacy. Over 75% of consumers are concerned about misinformation from AI. Many people are also concerned with big companies like Google and OpenAI using their information in unknown ways. What if knowing about your health data is able to predict the kind of health that you have and maybe the kind of insurance that you have? Now, one of the most prominent and media covered trends is how AI is affecting our jobs. There's been tons of research that has gone into this field and analyzing the skills that are needed for a job, how easily it is that it can be automated. The general consensus though, is that AI is going to be taking away more jobs than it is going to contribute towards most jobs. AI is incredible. It can do this and this and this. But if you don't know how to interact with AI properly, you may get this, this, and this, and a lot of frustration. That is why the most important foundational skill that you need to learn is prompt engineering, which is the process in which you're guiding the AI in order to generate your desired outputs. For example, if you tell it to directly write the history of American space program, it will write something up for you, but there's gonna be hallucinations where AI is just gonna make something up and it just kind of like sounds off, you know? Like it just has that AI vibe to it. American space travel has been a symbol of innovation, exploration, and human achievement. From the early days of the space race to the modern era of commercial space flights, the United States has played a pivotal role in expanding humanity's presence beyond Earth. But if you prompt it correctly, you can get amazing results. For example, I have what I call like a five-step framework on how you should be using it to generate written content. The first one is to start off with using AI to brainstorm. Ask it questions about the space program, uh, who are the key players in the space program, what's the implication of that, culturally speaking. So just generally have a better idea of what it is that you're going to write. Then you can use this information and then ask it to create an outline of what it is that you want it to write. For example, you can specify that you want it to be 3000 words. It is something that is used for your essay for class and ask you to cite its sources. So you can actually double check the things that it's talking about and make sure that the sources um, actually say these things as well. Then the next step is to work with AI to tweak the outline. You can ask it to change the structure of how the paragraphs are formed. You can ask it to change some of the bullet points in order to better fit your thesis. Then after that, you can finally actually start writing the essay, writing it by bullet point by bullet point and tweaking it along the way. This iterative approach to using AI is something that can vastly change the results of your output. It is also a defense against hallucinations that the AI has a tendency to do. Anyways, this is one of the frameworks, one of the techniques that you can use to get better results. As we can see, AI tools such as ChatGPT are really powerful and can help you be much more productive. Something that is a crucial skill for you to keep up with the future. HubSpot has a whole bundle of resources designed to help you unlock the full potential of ChatGPT and make you super productive. It's very well laid out. It gives you a lot of ideas on how to incorporate ChatGPT. For example, using ChatGPT to consolidate different research material like articles and tutorials and papers. So instead of having to flip through all the research material by yourself, you can directly ask ChatGPT questions related to those resources or keeping up to date with news and updates. Time management has prioritization as well. They also have this nice flowchart on when it's appropriate to use ChatGPT 
GPT to solve a problem or streamline your workflow. My favorite part is that it gives you over a hundred prompts to use in ChatGPT, which is really useful because prompting and prompt engineering is so important in using ChatGPT. The best part is that it is completely free. I highly recommend that you download it in this link over here, also linked in description. Thank you so much HubSpot for providing these free resources to help us leverage the power of AI and for sponsoring this portion of the video. Let's meet our friend Sammy. Sammy is your rather typical white collar worker working as a consultant. He has three tasks assigned to him for today. The first one is to read through a lot of papers and articles in order to do research on agriculture techniques. Then he needs to take that data and make some relevant visualizations. And finally, he has to do a PowerPoint to showcase to the client everything that he discovered and give his recommendations. Now, this would have taken him the whole day to do, but with the help of AI, he can use ChatGPT or even create himself an agent called a GPT that can do this research for him. He can scour the internet uh, for the most relevant research papers and be able to summarize them as well. He can then use Microsoft Copilot on Excel and start doing some cleanup and visualizations. It's not perfect, but it gets a large part of that grunt work done. Then he can use Copilot in PowerPoint and prompt it to make a beautiful PowerPoint based upon his research and the visualizations he created. So instead of spending the whole day and probably a few hours after as well doing these tasks, he finishes this in like a couple couple hours and then chills for the rest of the day. Yet, he still prays for his quality and the aesthetics of his work. Now, like I said earlier, there's a lot of other hype tools that claim to make you so much more productive, and it does to some extent, but it's not worth the ROI paying for some sort of subscription. But I do want to share some of my favorite tools. The first one is Harpa.ai. This is wonderful for summarizing different articles, but especially for video content, YouTube video content. It's able to derive the notes from YouTube videos, and it can also help you take that information and put it into content. This is a completely free tool, and they're releasing new features very frequently. HeyGen is an interesting one. It's for cloning yourself including your voice. I like to use this to pretend to be myself in certain circumstances. Am I actually Tina or a clone of Tina right now? Who knows? Speechify is wonderful. It's able to take any text information and change that into audio format. I learn very well through audio format, so this has been really, really helpful. For those of you who code, I'm sure that you've heard about GitHub Copilot, and there's a lot of plugins now in your favorite IDEs. I'm really interested in learning more about Alpha Code 2 from Google uh, when it does get released. Learning these AI tools will make you much more productive, and this is a skill that is gonna be in higher and higher demand, um, especially since other people are gonna be trying to be more productive as well. So to stay ahead of that curve, you need to be learning these skills as well. I like my privacy. You know, I do too. That's another thing we have in common. Now, let's talk about misinformation and privacy. More and more people are becoming more cognizant of misinformation and of privacy, and for a really good reason. Incorrect information can spread like wildfire, and even if you correct it afterwards, it still leaves an impression. The creators of AI do try to put in some safeguards for misinformation, but it's really not that hard to get around it. And there's a tendency for large language models to hallucinate anyway. This is a big problem for individuals and also for companies because they would ruin their reputation if they were just saying things that were not true. This is why learning skills in order to limit these hallucinations, limit the access of misinformation is really important. Asking AI to cite its sources is probably the easiest thing that you can do. Just make sure that you actually go through these sources and the things that are being said from the AI is in fact the same as those primary sources. There's also tools out there that can help you determine if something is misinformation or not. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check those out. But it's definitely a skill that you wanna pay attention to. Now, privacy is also huge. Say you have a lot of sensitive data, just information that you don't want other people to know, and you want to be able to analyze it and derive information from it. Uh, you could put it into ChatGPT and it's able to do that, but maybe you don't want it to have that information or just straight out, you're not allowed to do that. A lot of companies are not gonna even let you upload it into a large language model like GPT-4. So this is where open source models come in. These are ones that you can download or also use on the cloud in which you can feed it information and you can control who it is that can, can have access to it. So it's not gonna be like, like those closed source GPT-4 and you don't know what that information is being used for. It also allows for more flexibility in you being able to change the model to do certain things that are more useful to you. So you're making sure that no information is being leaked out. You don't even need to have internet connection in that case. The first common technique that's really helpful for open source models is fine tuning them. You have the ability of tweaking the model by feeding it specifically certain types of data and changing the weights within the model so you can get it to do more specific things better. Another technique is called RAG 
which is a way of enhancing the accuracy and the precision of the outputs by giving a database that is able to real-time search up. Let me know in the comments, we can actually do a live stream in which I go into more tutorial or more technical things that we can do. All right, last trend we're gonna talk about, perhaps one of the most prominent trends, is jobs. Generally speaking, researchers believe that there's gonna be more jobs that are taken away by AI than it is being created. The exact ratio of this is hard to determine, at least right now. Um, as more data comes in, I'm sure that we're gonna have more accurate predictions. So without commenting so much about what we can possibly do to change society as a whole and the jobs that will be happening, that is beyond the scope of most people, I believe, unless you are uh, very high up in the policy making stuff. But at least for yourself, in order to protect yourself against potential job loss, you should consider taking all the different AI skills that you learn and putting them together to create something that is even more powerful. That is by developing your own AI product. You've learned about prompt engineering techniques and gained a lot of intuition for how to interact with AI. You've used a lot of AI products. So now you can actually start building your AI products and be able to integrate them into certain businesses to help businesses themselves be more productive and achieve their goals. Over 50 to 60% of companies really want to use AI to improve their businesses and see a lot of value in doing this. The issue is that there's actually not that many people who are capable of doing this. You want to be one of those people. These days, you can actually get away with a lot of no-code tools if you're not into coding by using a combination of different tools that are chained together. I'll also link some of the resources below for the things that you can actually make. And I would say doing this probably covers like 80% of, of all the use cases out there. But if you really want to take this a step further and learn a skill that is even more valuable, you then need to gain a better understanding of how AI models work. For example, how do large language models work? How is it that AI videos are being generated? So in order to do this, you do need to learn how to code. You'll be able to fine tune things. You'll be able to use RAG. You'll be able to host different models because when new technologies come out, it's always going to be code first before they're developed into no code or low code tools. The research shows that AI supported roles like AI engineering, AI product development, data analyst, ML ops. These are all expected to be roles that will grow increasingly more important and have more opportunities. So if you're interested, in learning more about how to use AI and from a more technical perspective. I also recommend you check out my program that I have called Lonely Octopus. We teach people these AI skills. We go pretty technical as well. So you're able to really gain that skill set that puts you ahead of other people. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this is helpful um, in terms of what skills that you should be learning in order to achieve more of these results. Let me know in the comments below if there's other skills or other tools uh, that you also think is useful that I haven't mentioned. I would love to check those out as well. I'll see you in the next video or live stream.